Welcome. The Board for Professional Engineers, Land Surveyors, and Geologists, the Board, is hosting workshops to receive input to identify the minimum curriculum required for a qualifying geological sciences degree in order to apply for licensure as a professional geologist in California. My name is Lori Rocca. I am the staff geologist to the Board. Qualifying for a geology license requires education, work experience, and passing the required examinations. The purpose of this workshop is to gather input in order to define and clarify the education part of the requirement. The education requirements for geology licensing in California are described in Section 7841B of the California Business and Professions Code, which specifies graduation from a college or university with a major in geological sciences. The agenda provided is a way to frame and organize the discussion. It is not meant to be limiting. The agenda helps to provide a focus on what we hope to accomplish and to summarize how we got here. We want to describe the research that has been done and provide a path forward to help us reach our goal. We'll begin with a description of the purpose of the board, a statement of the issue to be addressed, and a summary of the rulemaking process. We'll cover the history of the qualification requirements for geology licensing, describe the current requirements, and review some recent trends and issues we see in geology license applications submitted to the board. We'll also outline our understanding of current requirements for a university degree in geological sciences. We'll discuss current licensing or certification models for professional societies, other states, and Canada. We'll also look at available occupational surveys and competency models. Then we'll look at major elements being considered for the proposed regulation and review some of the possible approaches that may be used to define requirements for a geological sciences degree for the purpose of licensing. Finally, we'll provide an outline of the next steps in the process. The purpose of the board is protection of the public. The board accomplishes that purpose by licensing, including its exam development, which promotes appropriate standards for competence. Enforcing laws and regulations, which are the project work plan or roadmap that serve as the agreed upon framework or structure for professional practice. For example, establishing a regulation to clarify the educational requirements for geologists is why we are hosting these workshops. The board also promotes professional conduct, which goes hand in hand with technical competence to protect the public. We provide information to the public and licensees so that they can participate in the board's activities in a meaningful way. And we anticipate changes to the professions we regulate so that the tools we use, licensing, laws and regulations, outreach, remain relevant to our core mission. Good decisions, sustainable decisions, must involve all stakeholders. The board is made up of both members of the professions we regulate and our public members. The professional members provide their technical expertise, experience and judgment in their chosen field, and an understanding of the ethical norms and standard of care for their professions. Public members participate to represent consumers and the public in general. Because the public is affected by government decisions, the public has a right to be involved in the decision-making process. Our public board members also ensure that all relevant perspectives are included in the process. Betsy Matheson is the current geologist board member. So why are we here today? The board has long recognized that there is confusion among potential licensees regarding the requirement for graduation with a major in geological sciences from a college or university. The confusion appears to be due to several factors listed on this slide. What this all adds up to is a communication issue. The board needs to state what it needs in order to qualify applicants for licensure. We base this on the state of the practice as defined by licensed practicing professionals. That information should be communicated to the colleges and universities that educate future geologists so that their students can make informed decisions about their education. The board intends to define the minimum curriculum for a qualifying geological sciences degree for the purposes of licensing professional geologists in the California Code of Regulations. As a reminder, 
Laws are drafted by the legislature and signed into law by the governor. The board drafts regulations to carry out the laws. The board elected to proceed via the regulations pathway in order to have more flexibility to make future changes should changes in the geology profession require it. At this point, I'd like to remind everyone that a bibliography describing the research done to date on the subject of geology education is posted on the board's website as part of the workshop meeting materials. To download the meeting materials, please visit our website at www.bpelsg.ca.gov. This next slide is a flowchart that summarizes the formal rulemaking process for developing a regulation. These workshops are part of the preliminary activities phase. The board will accept comments from stakeholders until March 31, 2016. Board staff will write a draft regulation based upon the research conducted and input received from stakeholders as part of this preliminary activities phase. The draft regulation will be submitted to the board at a future board meeting for consideration. The board may ask for more information or request that staff make changes to the draft regulation. Or the board may authorize staff to begin the formal rulemaking process. After board approval, a notice of proposed rulemaking will start the process. There will be many more opportunities for public comment and input. The former Board of Registration for Geologists and Geophysicists was created in 1968. From 1968 to 2003, the text and substance of the geology license qualifications, as stated in the law, changed very little. The original education requirements included graduation with a major in geology or completion of 30 semester units in geological science courses leading to a major in geology, of which at least 24 units are in the third or fourth year or graduate courses. Although very little documentation is available regarding the reasoning behind the original education requirements, the 30 semester unit option appears to have been what was required in order to obtain a geology degree at the time. Applicants without the actual degree were required to have additional work experience in order to qualify for a license. In 2004, the former Board of Registration for Geologists and Geophysicists changed the education and experience requirements in the law. Again, very little documentation was found to explain the rationale or basis for the 2004 requirements. In 2009, the former Board of Registration for Geologists and Geophysicists was eliminated by the legislature and its functions transferred to the Board for Professional Engineers, Land Surveyors, and Geologists. In 2016, the phrase, or any other discipline that in the opinion of the board is relevant to geology, was added to the law. This addition helps to strengthen the board's authority to define the geology education requirements by clarifying the existing regulations. A side-by-side -side comparison of the California Geology License Education Qualifications over time is presented in this slide. Key changes are highlighted in bold text. The phrase that the Board is clarifying via these workshops and the rulemaking process is a major in geological sciences from college or university. While this requirement seems straightforward, applicants for a geology license have expressed confusion specific to this language. If the definition of geological sciences is substituted, this phrase would specify a degree pertaining to the science of geology. However, even this phrase has some shortcomings due to what is not included. It doesn't specify an accredited institution. It doesn't define whether the intent is a two-year degree or a four-year degree. And it also doesn't exclude life experience degrees. Additionally, instead of applying the definition of geological sciences when reading the law, non-licensed professions such as soil science or environmental science tend to interpret the definition based upon their own experiences and often think that they should be licensed as geologists. Another factor is that geology degrees are characterized by a wide variety of options and academic flexibility based on the goals and interests of the student. There is no standard curriculum for a geology degree 
and this, along with curriculum updates and renaming of traditional courses, often leads to confusion when evaluating an applicant's education. Current practice by board staff for evaluating education requirements consists of reviewing college transcripts to determine if the applicant attended an institution acceptable to the board. For example, life experience degrees from diploma mills are not acceptable. Staff determine what type of degree the applicant has been awarded, bachelor, master's, etc. Transcripts are reviewed to determine if there is a concentration of upper division coursework in geology as opposed to soil science, oceanography, or climate change, for example. If the college or university offers a degree in geology but the application lists a non-geology degree, the coursework completed is compared to the coursework required for a geology degree at that institution. If the college or university does not offer a degree in geology, the requirements of a related or nearby institution are used for comparison, e.g. CSU to CSU comparison. College websites are often accessed to review course descriptions. Most websites have past year's catalogs available. Board staff look for a depth and breadth of geology coursework applicable to the standard practice for the geology profession. The emphasis of this next slide is that degree names and course titles have evolved so much that reliance on the degree names and course titles alone in evaluating the geology education of an applicant is not possible. Applications that are approved or not approved often contain degree titles that are the same or very similar. The detailed review of coursework listed on the college transcripts can reveal significant differences in education for applicants with degrees sharing the same title. Additional information in the form of course catalogs, syllabi, textbook information, etc. is often requested by board staff. Additionally, there has been a trend toward multidisciplinary degrees to address complex issues such as climate change. However, multidisciplinary degrees by their very nature do not encompass the depth and breadth of a geology education required for geology licensure. Based on a review of the geology license applications, the predominant practice area for denied applicants is the environmental cleanup industry. This appears to be due to the multidisciplinary nature of environmental projects which often require the skills of a variety of professionals, both licensed and non-licensed. The board has been looking to clarify the education requirements for geology licensure for several years. The topic was discussed extensively by the board's Geologist and Geophysicist Technical Advisory Committee, the GNG TAC, in 2012. The agenda and meeting minutes of these TAC meetings are available for review on the board's website at www.bpelsg.ca.gov. At the request of the TAC, board staff researched the requirements of California State University System Schools offering geoscience majors in 2012. The TAC developed a list of recommended courses to define a geological sciences degree and recommended changes to the law. These recommendations were not adopted pending further study of the issue. Fast forward to fall 2015. Board staff updated the informal review of geoscience majors by researching the requirements of a larger group of California colleges and universities offering geoscience degrees. A list of 35 geoscience departments was compiled using the American Geosciences Institute Directory of Geoscience Departments and other geoscience organizations and an online search of the degrees offered by the California State University System and the University of California System. A complete list of the schools and majors included in this effort is included in the workshop meeting materials posted on the board's website. The Geoscience Department websites along with the online university catalogs were reviewed for each of the 35 selected institutions. A total of 96 Geoscience, Earth Science, or other related majors were included in this informal compilation. Both Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees were included. Board staff reviewed the coursework specific to a geology or related major and for majors typically seen in applications for geology licensure. 
The 96 majors included 27 traditional Bachelor of Science Geology degrees. Coursework necessary to satisfy general education requirements and cognate requirements such as math, chemistry, etc. were not evaluated. This effort was designed to establish a baseline of existing geoscience education requirements at California colleges and universities. Difficulties encountered by board staff during the review of California College and University Geoscience degree requirements mirror the situations encountered when reviewing transcripts submitted for geology license applications. These include a lack of standardized course content, varying course names, large number of electives, multiple pathways or options for degrees, and varying degree names and requirements. Additionally, a separate course specific to California geology is not a requirement for most of the majors, despite the specific licensing test on the subject. It does appear that most geoscience departments incorporate California geology topics into the day-to-day -day coursework. However, this is not well documented in the course catalogs. For the purposes of this effort, units listed on the college and university websites were assumed to be consistent with the definition of credit hours as described by the U.S. Department of Education. The terms unit and hour are used interchangeably. For comparison purposes, quarter system units were converted to semester system units using the formula one semester unit equals 1.5 quarter system units. The results of the review for all 96 majors indicate that California institutions using the semester system on average require 41 units of geology courses. For California institutions using the quarter system, the average was 31 to 32 units of geology coursework. For the 27 traditional Bachelor of Science Geology degrees, the number of units of required geology coursework varied between 31 and 88 units. These numbers should be treated as approximate as board staff made a number of assumptions and judgments due to the variety of options available to students. For example, at the University of Southern California, there are seven different classes to choose from in order to satisfy the requirement for an introductory lower division geology class. There is a core group of five required classes and then a list of 13 classes from which the student must select seven in order to satisfy the departmental degree requirements. Students may also select additional major electives to suit their personal interests. Based upon this review, it does appear that a 30-unit minimum for defining a geological sciences degree appears to be justified. This table compares the 2012 Geology and Geophysics TAC recommended coursework list to the findings of the 2015 informal survey of degree requirements conducted by board staff. This comparison is also broken out into the larger group of 96 majors and the smaller subgroup of 27 traditional Bachelor of Science Geology majors. Optional in the context of this table means that the course is one of several choices to meet the major requirement. Additionally, the field geology requirement includes both upper division field classes and the traditional summer field class due to changes in the way colleges and universities are teaching these skills. Many schools appear to be incorporating upper division field work into the day-to-day -day coursework and or an upper division field course instead of the traditional summer field camp. Board staff also reviewed several licensure, registration, or certification models from organizations outside of the California Licensing Board. The American Institute of Professional Geologists, a professional organization, offers the Certified Professional Geologist designation. This is not a license, but it is used by some states as a registration requirement. Additionally, the original California Board for Geologists and Geophysicists discussed the AIPG requirements as well as AIPG approved courses in 1969 before starting to issue licenses in 1970. There is no documentation to indicate whether the former California Board for Geologists and Geophysicists officially or unofficially utilized AIPG criteria during the early years of California geology licensure. However, it does appear that the former board at least reviewed the AIPG model. 
The AIPG core list of courses appears to be almost identical to the recommended list of core courses developed by the Geology and Geophysics TAC in 2012. The National Association of State Boards of Geology, ASBOG, is an organization that develops a standardized national examination for geology licensing utilized by its member states. ASBOG also serves as a connective link between the state boards for issues of common interest. ASBOG has developed a model licensure law and model rules and regulations as a way to assist the various member boards when drafting new laws or regulations or modifying existing laws and regulations. The ASBOG model regulations include requirements for a four-year degree from an accredited college or university or a geology program accredited by an organization recognized by the board and includes at least 30 semester hours of geologic coursework. Board staff also reviewed the geology licensure requirements of other U.S. states and the territory of Puerto Rico. This was an informal survey based on a website review of available laws and regulations. The text of the state laws and regulations varies widely. The most consistent requirement was that 29 state license boards specify 30 semester units of geology coursework and many specify that 24 of those units must be in upper division courses. 16 states provide lists of either mandatory courses, suggested courses, or broad topics that must be covered. In general, the state requirements are fairly consistent and include core requirements typical of a traditional Bachelor of Science geology degree. For example, structural geology, field geology, mineralogy, petrology, etc. Five states provide a path to licensure for applicants without a college degree. For the states that require a college degree, the description often includes phrases such as degree in geology, geosciences, engineering geology, and or the option of a degree in a geologic specialty. The practice of geology is also regulated by most provinces and territories in Canada. Geoscience is self-regulated by the professional associations that register geoscientists in three general practice areas. The education requirements are similar to many U.S. states in that a minimum number of geology courses or units are required. The educational units defined by Canadian universities do not correlate directly to the educational units used by U.S. institutions. However, the general intent to specify a minimum curriculum appears to be similar. Occupational surveys are conducted periodically by both the National Association of State Boards of Geology and by the State of California to ensure that the content of licensing exams remains relevant to the state of the practice. These surveys were reviewed to determine what skills are important to practicing industry professionals who are licensed by the board. Additionally, the National Science Foundation sponsored the 2016 Summit on the Future of Undergraduate Geoscience Education. The Geoscience Education Summit focused on defining the knowledge, skills, and abilities that undergraduate students need to be successful. The summit webpage includes a geoscience community survey describing what respondents feel are the skills needed for both graduate school and the workforce. Board staff also reviewed the recommended knowledge requirements for professional geologist registration in Canada. In addition to the occupation surveys and competency models, board staff have reviewed a number of technical papers that attempt to correlate education requirements with the skills necessary to succeed as a practicing geologist. These references are included in the bibliography included with the workshop meeting materials posted on the board's website at www.bpelsg.ca.gov. This next slide is excerpted from the 2015 ASBOG Task Analysis Survey used to develop the National Fundamentals of Geology and Practice of Geology exams for professional geologist licensing. The survey was sent to professional geologists in the United States and Canada, as well as academics. The survey consisted of 43 task statements that were ranked by respondents on a scale of 0 to 3 based on the importance of the task to the practice of geology. This slide does not include responses from Canadian geologists. In general, the responses from U.S. geologists in both licensed states and non-licensed states are very consistent. 
This slide highlights that the applied topics of general and field geology, hydrogeology, and engineering geology are most important to the profession as it is practiced in the U.S. The respondents to the ASBOG survey were primarily practicing geologists. Approximately 79% of the respondents were practicing geologists from the United States. Approximately 13% of the respondents were practicing geologists from Canada, and approximately 6% of the respondents represented academia. The next two slides are summaries of the ASBOG Fundamentals of Geology and Practice of Geology exams. The FG exam reflects the breadth of a geology education, training in the scientific process, and problem-solving abilities. The PG exam test blueprint reflects a shift toward applied subjects that are more important to practicing geologists. This is reflected in the greater emphasis on subjects such as engineering geology, economic and resources geology, and hydrogeology. This shift in the perceived importance of certain subject areas or skills is further emphasized by reviewing the occupational survey conducted by the State of California for the California-specific examination required for licensure in this state. The California survey was limited to licensed geologists practicing in the state. The primary specialization of practicing geologists responding to the California survey is dominated by engineering geology, environmental geology, and hydrogeology. This is consistent with the importance of these topics in the responses to the ASBOG task analysis survey. The general knowledge areas emphasized in the California specific examination are dominated by applied geology topics such as geologic investigation techniques and field practice, hydrogeology, environmental geology, and engineering geology. A summary of the results to date of the ongoing Geoscience Community Survey developed as part of the Undergraduate Geoscience Education Summit is presented in this slide. Based on the number of respondents listed on the summit webpage, the participants in this survey are dominated by academics, approximately 77%, with a much lower percentage of respondents from industry or practicing geologists at 16%. The major conclusion of the summit and this survey is on developing competencies, skills, and conceptual understanding. The structure of the Geoscience Community Survey is different than the occupational surveys conducted by both ASBOG and the State of California, which is reflective of their different purposes. The Geoscience Community Survey questions are broader in scope, which is consistent with the broader focus of education. The ASBOG and California survey questions or statements tend to be more focused towards applied tasks. While the two surveys are structured differently, and the geoscience communities of academia and practicing geologists may communicate in different ways, it does appear that there are specific competencies that are important overall. Both academia and practicing geologists prefer to focus on knowledge, skills, and abilities over specific course names that teach them. From a licensing application perspective, the biggest hurdle to implementing a skills list approach over a course list approach is the way education is documented by the colleges and universities. Academic transcripts are limited to a list of course names and do not include a skills matrix that ties specific skill sets to courses. The Geosciences Canada knowledge requirements are typically met through a bachelor's degree in geoscience. The candidate's transcripts are compared against the knowledge requirements. There are general knowledge requirement descriptions that guide the process. The compulsory foundational skills common to the three practice areas used in Canada are similar to the core coursework described by both the AIPG Certified Professional Geologist designation requirements and the core coursework developed in 2012 by the Geologist and Geophysicist TAC. So what does all this mean for geology licensing in California? At this time, the board has not selected a list of courses, a list of skills, or decided on any particular approach. However, it is likely that the regulation will be much more specific in describing the education requirements for geology licensure. These requirements could include specifying a four-year degree, specifying an accredited institution, placing the burden of documentation on the applicant, and possibly a list of required courses. Two key elements of the existing requirements will remain the same. 
the amount of education credit granted toward the five-year experience requirement. This requirement is part of the existing statute. The current requirement in the regulations stating that professional work experience credit is not counted until the educational requirements are fulfilled is not being considered for changes. The following slides present concepts or requirements that are being considered for inclusion in the draft regulation. Please note that these examples are for discussion purposes only. Option 1 would adopt the 2011 ASBOG model regulation language. This option would facilitate comedy applications and does specify an objective standard. However, it is somewhat general and lacks a specific list of skills or coursework. Options 2A and 2B consist of developing a fixed or flexible list of required coursework. This would be easy to implement because college transcripts are designed to provide a list of courses. These options would be easy for applicants to understand, but they do not provide for future changes in university curricula. Option 3 consists of lists of skills or subject areas and would require the applicant to demonstrate that their coursework meets the requirements. This approach is adaptable and easy to correlate with occupational surveys that describe skills needed for practicing geologists. However, college transcripts are set up to provide a list of courses, and this may be difficult to implement with existing methods of documentation. This approach would also place more of the documentation burden on the applicant. Option 4 would include a list of fixed or flexible coursework with a description of the skills the board expects each course to provide. This is reasonable to implement using a combination of college transcripts and supporting documentation and would likely prove adaptable to evolving university curricula. It also places more of a burden on the applicant to supply the needed documentation. Please provide written comments to the board by March 31, 2016. Comments may be sent via email or conventional mail. After review of stakeholder input, Proposed amendments to Section 3031 of the regulation will be presented at a future board meeting. The board may approve the proposed language and begin formal rulemaking, request more information before proceeding, or require changes to the proposed regulation before starting the formal rulemaking process. As of Monday, February 29, 2016, the board has hosted two public workshops. Comments received to date fall into the following general categories. Practicing geologists reporting a perceived lack of field skills with recent graduates. Comments regarding the expense of undergraduate geology field coursework. Members of non-licensed professions expressing frustration that they were not made aware of licensing requirements when choosing a college major and seeking a pathway to geology licensure lists of specific courses that should be included in the requirements, and generally positive feedback from geology departments indicating a willingness to help applicants gather the appropriate documentation for the educational requirements of a license application. Please stay informed and be involved in the process by subscribing to the board's email list, Facebook page, or Twitter feed. Updates regarding this process will be announced on the board's website via email and social media. Thank you.